We're good. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the November meeting again. Uh, we're going to start with financials. Dan is not here currently. So membership changes. We have we are currently plus two minus one for the month. We are at 112, including family and special cases. So that's nice. We're holding steady there. And then post that. We just finished Maker Fair Orlando over the weekend. So several of us are very tired. Uh, that being said, uh, Michelle, thank you for kind of Michelle, Jamie, and David, thank you for heading up the Learn to Solder. Our membership attendance, our membership volunteer attendance was very low this year. Uh, part of that's due to pandemic, part of that's due to maybe us not pushing enough. And what we're wondering is what can we do in the future to make sure our presence is seen at future community events such as Maker Faire. It has to be driven. Go ahead. It, it has to be driven. I've been at every member meeting this year, save one. And it was lately mentioned at two meetings. There wasn't a huge push in Slack or email or any of our normal channels. Um, I, I it, there has to be a push. There wasn't one. I I am in complete agreement with Jamie on this. I did I did I've not been in all the meetings, but I do kind of somewhat monitor Slack, and I've not seen a big push. As a matter of fact, there's only two people here who've done anything with soldering. And that's Jamie and me in the past. And neither of us were approached at all. We were only approached by Ian and Candy directly. I didn't realize Lab still owned soldering until Ian approached us, which was two weeks before the fair. Um, so the fair, like Famalab did not run soldering. Famalab didn't even have a table at Maker Fair. But for ha they had half On a table for one day. I'm, I'm, I've been a member for Family Lab for a long time. I've been to Maker Fair a lot. I've been to a lot of Maker Fairs, and I am just disappointed with the lab in general on this. Uh, I don't know what to say on this. The, I, I don't even know. I just don't have a have a good answer for this. I am. If if the community isn't pushing the things, it is the board's responsibility to then take up that slack. They have to do it. Uh, go ahead, Lindsay. All right. Um, if there had been a sign-up sheet for the table, I could have rescued the table on Sunday because uh, I had other things. I had a different club to go do on Saturday, and I knew I was coming out Sunday, and I would have gladly picked up uh, Sunday. That was my plan was to show up because there was no sign-up sheet. I was just going to show up and be like, whoever is at the table, go potty go eat food go check out the fair but we did, we, no way to know that i was going to do that because there was no sign up sheet we could not maintain the table because we couldn't even we were having issues even keeping up with the little bit of soldering, soldering that was going on we were running crazy over there there was nobody helping us for that stuff and i was calling for volunteers on a regular basis from ian and from dispatch so that we could get yeah, some volunteers uh, on Sunday, we did the bulk of our volunteers didn't show up till eleven, so we we couldn't run the fam lab table and soldering because we were teaching and teaching the volunteers when they showed up and handling the money and da 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 da. da. Um, so we we moved the fam lab stuff out of the way and took over that table because we needed it for soldering, and there was nobody there to drive it. Famalab's biggest event is Maker Fair, and, and we didn't biggest, show up. Yeah, it's big. It's biggest income. The uh, most of the time is soldering, and and Famalab didn't drive it. Famalab didn't drive it, and to the point where I told Candy that they should reinvest that back into the fair because Famalab did not put forth the effort to to want it. They didn't. They didn't have any interest in it, so they didn't get it. I, th I think it's a little hypocritical to 
ask for people to go to Maker Faire while we still have the lab lockdown. I absolutely agree, and I think that that is another issue that I want to bring up later in this, that I think that based off of the way that the world is running right now, the lab should be reopened with conditions, but essentially open to anybody with proper masking, which is what a lot of other spaces are doing, because right now you can go to any restaurant, you can go pretty much anywhere, there is not a problem. I am one of the biggest supporters of making sure you're vaccinated, making sure you're masked, making sure you're being safe. I went through a shitload of stuff when we went through it initially, and I made I don't know how many thousands of shields and masks and time to try and make sure people were staying safe. So I am absolutely a supporter of staying safe, but I think that we have gone too far on the lab staying closed and not having people in the space because all you're doing is hurting the lab and driving people to other interests. That, that came dance, from a lot of leave. feedback. That came from a lot of feedback from meter meeting. Uh, uh, prior meetings where people were still, you know, requesting that we keep the lab locked down. So that came directly from the membership. Well, I was, I was at ago. the meetings. M months ago though. That was yeah. months ago. Yeah. And that's actually on the docket for this meeting is seeing where the community stands, <clears throat> where the membership stands in regards to that. Uh, we this has been a kind of back and forth. And unfortunately, because we've only been having monthly meetings, we don't have biweekly or anything, it's slow to really get response from the community. The last time we really called out for volunteers and we're trying to feel like what is people's uh, feelings about getting back into the full swing of things was really when uh, just before Maker Faire actually announced their volunteers and that they were actually going to run this here over the summer. Uh, and that was like, we were planning, we're going to have a party. Everything's going to come back to normal. We've got vaccines coming out. And hey, here's the Delta variant. And so there was a really big whiplash between, hey, the community really wants to do stuff to, hey, the community really doesn't want to do stuff. And so we've been in this awkward phase of like, what is Delta doing and how comfortable are people coming back? And people generally, when we've asked and tried to, to reach out to people individually for volunteering, have been very uh, lukewarm at best at actually participating, unfortunately. Um, and it's frustrating, yeah, but it's we have a lot of susceptible members, and when we try to tap people, um, it's either a time thing or it's been a, a concern about travel and contact thing. Well, with respect to Maker Fair and reply to that, so I am one of those susceptible folks. I'm also the person, one of the people who did soldering, and like David said, no one had asked, and I didn't know that we still had to, the soldering event as ours. Um, if nothing else, and I, I hate to say this, if nothing else, if we knew we didn't have volunteers for table and for soldering, we should have yielded them. We should have withdrawn. I'm, I'm sure we, I'm sure as a lab, we would have seen the writing on the wall, you know, a month before the fair, at, at three weeks at least. Um, and, and handed soldering back to the fair and handed the family lab table space back over. You're not wrong. No. I'll admit that I probably should have been a little more on top of that. I was trying to not, I was trying to not be as involved in that as possible. I was trying to let other people do it, but that is my responsibility and I take the blame for that. Yeah, essentially like, we, the board, yes, we fucked up this year. Uh, we should have been more forthcoming. It's a difficult year. You know, we made decisions and, you know, we got to live by them. I, I understand a difficult year. I understand <clears throat> difficult decisions. And the majority of people who are here know how we got to this point. Like, they were part of the lab when all this stuff was starting. I went through this. You guys went through this. We all went through this. It's difficult. But just because it's difficult doesn't mean we stop. Well, I, I think we need to plan moving forward. Um, we, we haven't had any screaming and shouting about opening up the lab. No one's been pushing it. Everyone's been just hiding out and, and doing their own thing. I'm at the lab there two or three been, times yeah. a week. 
ev every time we've yeah. asked for like hey can does anybody want to start doing classes this or that like there's a couple new members who've offered to do things and that's cool but then when we're actually trying to find out like hey who would want to sign up for a class or do anything like i mean the Z signs are instance. down at the lab someone pulled yeah. down most of the signs on that point to prevent this from going further like we do have a questionnaire that we've been making that we will be sending out to members that is essentially about this you know uh yeah how do you... part part of today's meeting was we were going to announce having a kind of a census to like get a feeling of like where are people right now and how comfortable and what direction do we want to go because we're at this point where we're like hopefully covid's getting behind us and hopefully people are, are feeling more comfortable but and it's also a good time to get a idea from the rest of the membership. Now that COVID is mostly past us, hopefully, where do you want to see the lab go? Wear a mask if you're uncomfortable or you're or you're compromised, or and if you're sick, stay home. Other than that, just open it back up. And the, the way the that that, effects deals with it is that if you're in a room with somebody who has a mask on, put a mask on. Yeah, exactly. Don't be a dick. I mean, I'm, I'm to the point now where I'm there in the mornings on the weekend. I'm the only one there. I'm not wearing a mask. Unless I'm grinding on the bell grinder, and I have to, but yeah. Because no one else is there. It's just me. And that's fine. I I am completely fine with that. Yeah. But if you're, it, it, like I said, it comes down to, you know, don't be a dick. Yeah, if you're uncomfortable. If you're, if you're wearing a mask yeah. and somebody else walks up, they should be putting a mask on too take like i agree your your community and we're, we're a group and you should be working together i agree as far as direction at this point any direction we're we're almost stagnant right now and a lot of that is is the pandemic but we were having well, we've been stagnation. stagnant for the past two years because of covid we've been, we've been somewhat stagnant for a while um so almost it i don't want to say any yeah, I mean, direction it's... because god knows what people will come up with but a, a direction forward uh, the, with respect to the, the people teaching classes sometimes you just have to do a couple yourself to lead the way which i know sucks the, um, the second the lab closed down we just went in to make it through the next month mode. hibernation and that's that was the right yeah. thing to do and i i stand by that any day i i agree i think it was the right thing to do but i don't think we're there anymore and i don't think we've been there for a long time i agree i agree but you know, wait, uh, wait, not wait, everyone wait, has wait. that feeling. Not everyone feels that way, uh, David. I agree. I understand that. And that Delta confused things, um, and there were opportunities to communicate better. That obviously we could have, should have tried harder. Um, I thought we addressed with Ian early enough on that. Hey, we've we've tried to reach out, and we've not gotten any response from people about um, volunteers. But it seems like that message probably wasn't strongly worded enough for him to really get the idea. Um, and so, yeah, the this year could have gone better. Um, and the idea now is to look at like putting out a little bit of a census form, feeling out the community and trying to push for like, hey, holidays are coming up. The new year's coming up. Delta should be behind us. We're actually in a moderate area now. Like, let's look forward. So how about how about we start with opening or re reopening open house? And start putting the events that were reoccurring and, and people were attending back on the calendar and just get going on it and try and get things going next year. Like, we've only got a month left until people are going to be thinking about next year. A, a, a good direction is open house and maybe hybrid member meeting next month. November, next month is December. Yeah. Well, let's that's just that's the other thing is next month is going to be a week. Next month's member meeting is also going to be a week early. So there's that too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think we should just go ahead and have our, our meeting. And like I said, if you're ill or compromised, you know, we'll wear masks, whatever, but let's just go ahead and start meeting again, like the rest of the world is doing. Meet, meet and make it hybrid. We, we've got the virtual thing down pat now. I'm more or less kind of well, sort of. Um, it we've always been hybrid, though. So, yeah. Well, we've always been hybrid, but as somebody who's been <clears> hybrid more uh, often pre pandemic because of work, our hybrid kind of sucks. Uh, but our hybrid is much better now, or will be much better now, because our virtual is much better now. There's there's a lot less stuck in it. Agreed. So my big takeaway from here is 
we as the board need to do better at kind of getting the the feel for the community and going with that and we are trying to do that we're going to you know with the questionnaire and moving forward we're going to try to stay more on top of where the membership feels and where where they're going and if that means us leading the charge from the front we'll do our best uh, I'm going to be investing a lot of time into FamLab over the next few months, and I will do my best in that regard. Um, and the way, the best way we can go is forward, and we'll continue to do our best. Best is all we can do. And of course, thank you for bearing with us for the past crazy year and a half. Yeah, so next month we'll plan on having a open house on the first Tuesday, December 7th. And then our member meeting is going to be pushed up a week just because, uh, you know, normal member meeting would be on the 21st, which is the week of Christmas which probably wouldn't be a great idea. All right, yeah, I'm gonna move that now. Yeah, so uh, we'll get that moved on the calendar and we'll make an announcement about it uh, just because doing anything the week of Christmas or the week after Christmas is usually doomed to failure in the world. People are out of town, people are visiting with family, people have vis family visiting, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then we'll we'll see where we can go from there. And in the new year, we'll start getting workshops back on the schedule. We'll start getting classes there and start meeting in person again. Start seeing everyone's beautiful face. Just the eyes. Looks like I chose the perfect time to... Uh... Uh, try to join, you know, like, because everything's still <laughs> opening back up. So perfect. Yeah, and you get to see the the dialogue we do. No, that, that's that. This is perfect, man. I, I like that you all are honest with each other and you don't hide, you know, hide how you actually feel. Like, that's a really good <laughs> sign to me coming in. Like, I would hate, I hate to be around people that they, they feel a certain way and they don't express it. And then it gets bottled up and then it affects other parts of, I don't know. But yeah, it, this is nice. I like it. That's my secret, Captain. I hate everyone. <laughs> All right. Uh, that covers, I think, pretty much in a very big splash, everything on the agenda. <laughs> um, and in that questionnaire, there will be, you know, what do you want to see? lab do what classes workshops etc you want to see and a big old slop for any other questions comments uh, and it will be an anonymous so please when you we send out that survey be <clears throat> as honest as you see fit um we will not hold it against you for we cannot hold it against you you will have no idea who you are unless you tell us if you really want to want us to know who you are you can absolutely tell us in one of those fields but you do not have to we want it to be anonymous so that people can speak their minds so i'll i'll raise the question that was always a problem when i was president and i'm sure it's the same problem you guys are going to have now there are 16 members in this meeting you mentioned there's 112 currently what what percentage of those people are you going to require to be in agreement before you're making decisions based off of that? You, you understand what I'm saying? We're hoping to get a statistically significant number of replies at least. Yeah, well, statistically we, as in like 5%? We, well, this, is, this is one of the results of being disassociated with each other for so long. 
Yeah. Right? There's, there's no miracle cure that we can just say, oh, by the way, you know, this is a natural progression that's happened here. This is nothing surprising. I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just. But you're not. You're not. A, you're not giving us any solutions, though. You're just asking. I don't. Us I don't have. I don't have a solution right now. I don't know what a good yeah. solution is. Yeah. But that's. It's a question that has to get answered, whether or not there's a solution from me or whoever. It's still right. a question that has to get answered. Has to get asked. I think I opening the lab. I think opening the lab is a really good first start. <clears throat> And yeah, I'll put it this way, we will do our best to reach as many members as possible with the survey to get as good a response as possible. But ultimately, we can only operate and respond to those who respond to us. So if it is that it, it ends up being 5%, uh, we'll do our best to anticipate the unspoken, but if we do not get comments and responses from people, then we kind of, what do we do? Right, and we have a lot more people active on Slack that are members than we do are able to make it to the meetings for various reasons, so. Yeah, we'll post an announcement several times, uh, kind of like we do for annual meeting. Probably every other, probably like once a week until the next meeting. That's four weeks and probably a few times before that. So so what you have here right now is an enthusiasm gap between the 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 pre, the, the previous problems, delays, closures to you want to transition this to have people respond to you and come to the lab again. Where are the plans going to come from to make those things happen? Just adding the existing classes is okay, but where where's the driver that actually brings people back to the lab? We're like a social club who hasn't been able to socialize. So I think once the labs open, we start having live meetings again and open open uh, make nights. I think a lot of that's going to take care of itself. It will progress right back to where it was. What if we go with the original plan, which was to have a big hurrah party? for the lab only members only uh to drive everyone back and be like hey guys let's let's hang out again let's get reacquainted we'll go over some rules grand like, reopening like, of the lab because yeah, that's what we we're gonna do before delta came back you know came and got in our way again so we introduce the values of the lab to the people that have sort of forgotten yeah pick up where we left off it was about. new year's eve is on a friday night i'll just throw that out there that's a lot of people may already have plans. Yeah, I mean, I don't understand why you would wait that long. Okay. Be perfectly honest. But we're also really close to a very busy month and trying to throw yeah. something else in. It's just, it's chaos right now. Yeah, this is statistically the worst month and a half period uh, in most people's life. The, the typical The typical thing that happens with social clubs is early in December before the holiday party work stuff, you know, gets ramped up and the family stuff, the family stuff dies down from Thanksgiving and starts to ramp up from for, for Christmas. Um, so we could do the, the 10th, 10th or 11th. That's the second weekend of December. Or we can like take a few suggestions and we can make a quick Google form, throw it in announcement. For Katie. Uh, yeah, I was just going to suggest that, um, like, since December and January are kind of cold, and this would be a rather large gathering, that maybe having a midday party rather than an evening party would be better so that we can also maybe sit outside and socialize um, just to try and lower risk of transmission. I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. We could borrow. We have a few tents. We could borrow some tents if we need. Yeah. Parking lot party. And if we do something more midday, it could perhaps be a better way for the new folks to socialize without going face into a family holiday party. Yeah. <laughs> Valid. Um, Very true. Very true. For everyone who's seen those, that might be a bit much. I mean, the tree is ah. probably going to fall apart from being neglected. Wait, do we say <laughs> <it? laughs> 
That so should we'll be on the roof quick, somewhere. We'll put a quick uh, poll out for uh, the three weekends in December that are not Christmas. Um, maybe to incentivize people to also stay outside or eat outside, we could try and do something more like a cookout than have something catered. Yeah, um, I think or a potluck where people would be bringing a lot of outside food. I think pre Delta, that was kind of the plan. Yeah. And then Delta was just like, hey guys, gonna ruin all your plans. Yeah. So yeah. we could absolutely uh, bring some grills, rent some grills if we need, whatever. Well, definitely. Yeah, I think the lab has one. We can bring ours. I'm sure someone else has others. And then we can also just like maybe have one set aside for veggie vegetarian people. Mm -hmm. And, and there are also is things things at the lab that work on the outside, work in the parking lot. You know that can be demonstrated or played with or shown off. Yeah. Um, well, and like not yeah. to say that no one could go inside, just to encourage sure people enough. to stay inside. Yeah, I'll open the bay door, and people can come and go through the warehouse as well, and grand old party. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's plan it. Let's... So I'm putting the open house back on the calendar. Um, we're still doing the same original time that we're doing seven to nine, right? Was it seven? No, it was always yeah. eight. Eight to ten. Eight? I thought it was later, yeah. Maybe it was. All right. That's just what I was showing on this one. It's been too long. We, no. Yeah, that's... I mean, we can just make it a new time. Seven generally works better for people. Yep. I can be there <clears throat> at seven as well. Like um, I'll even bring a nice board. packet of masks for anybody who needs or wants and shows up. I was going to say, are we going to, if we're going to like post this publicly to try and obviously draw new people in, are we going to say, please bring a mask in case you need to put it on? Yes. Uh, for, for this kind of event and when there's a lot of people, we would recommend masks. Yeah. Just want to make sure that was clear and stated. We don't have a box of masks sitting at the lab right now, or two. I can go over and check. Um, several the next day or so. Several. several. There's several boxes. Like, if you don't have a mask or you forget your mask, we have masks for you. So do not, we're... Do, not make, do not make that as being a oh I, I forgot things or I have to go back. So since open house is going to be on the seventh, does anyone want to come out the weekend before and help me clean up and straighten up a bit so that the lab is? Uh, I don't know if I can meet you there, but I can definitely help. But I'll, I'll be there this, this weekend, probably. This is my uh, busy season at work, but I, I'll I'll find time to come out there and help clean. I can come on the third, but fourth and fifth, I'm I'm already committed to other things because it's a busy month. Yeah. <laughs> I will try to be there every weekend doing at least something. What so what, what, are we, what are we targeting, Brian, to, to get done? Just so um, I'm there and I can start something. Not yeah, if, you look, webs. <laughs> if you look around, you'll see. Oh, I, I look around. I've been there a bunch of times <laughs> in the last few <laughs> I haven't start, actually been there. Start with what has priority on. So we can start with the standard purge table rules. If it's not marked, it's not labeled, it doesn't look like trash, move it to the purge table um, and just clear out the classroom and the interior spaces, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. As to the warehouse areas, the workshop areas, um, just clearing the walkways of debris and miscellaneous right. junk. One of the things we can definitely start doing now that uh, Maker Fair Preps is over with, we can get rid of the extra metal that we don't need that we know we're never going to use. Put the welding place, wel welding panels back where they should be. Yeah, things like lots that. of little things like that, yeah. But the big the big thing for me was the, 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 the classroom area being kind of overrun by boxes, piles, stuff under the, under the desks, that kind of thing, and where that stuff goes. Uh, there's, there's a table of old equipment. I'll go ahead and get rid of that. I'm going to find someone to donate that to. It's the stuff that we decided that the lab did not need. Okay. Uh, most of it is in need of repair, anyways. But I'll find some. Do you need help with that? No, no, it's easy. All right. In the spirit of community, I would say take the help for it. Certainly, I would love some help. 
<laughs> how, you do, how much room you have in your garage, by the way? <laughs> I, I have a fair amount. How long does it have to stay there? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll I'll be doing post Maker Fair cleanup this week slash weekend. Um, because pretty much the entire mess in the welding area is my fault. And that's, luckily, that's not, like, not, not, not true. <laughs> You're actually luckily. doing something. It's not messy. It's just well used. Yeah. Yes. Yes. There's yeah, about that was 50 a pounds project of, you put together there. There's yeah. 50 pounds of grinding dust on the ground. <laughs> yeah, but it was a good project, though. It worked pretty well. But I'm willing to help this weekend um, with cleanup. I'm not like a, a member yet or anything, but I'm willing to help. So uh, anyone can reach out to me if you want to take me up on that. Let me know. Hey, you're a member Best now. Best bets ask in general. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome <laughs> aboard. <laughs> Come on up. Initiation up. complete. Pick up things, put things down. Pick up things, put things down. Yeah, your best bet's just to ask in general if anyone's going to be around. Um, I'm, like I said, I'll probably be there off and on uh, over the weekend this weekend. Um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm going to ride the train. I, I ride my one wheel, which is like electric skateboard, to the mm -hmm. train station. And then the, there's a train station near Famalab. Yep. So that's how I plan on getting there. Well, uh, let's. You'll introduce in a second, and we'll go over all that. Uh, so, we've kind of been free flow, open discussions during all of this. Uh, so, does anybody have anything to show and tell? I made another knife. Uh, <laughs> I made another knife. Show it off. <laughs> It's on Slack. <laughs> Ray's a happy man. He got his speed controller today. <laughs> Show it off while I try to find some photos from Robert. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, so <clears throat> I'm working on a uh, a project for uh, mobility uh, for uh, folks that are fully disabled. You know, sort of in the same spot I'm in with the damaged knees and damaged back, but still can be somewhat mobile. Uh, so the first phase of this is basically converting a ultralight uh, uh, push chair into a powered uh, chair that has a, uh, a sit stand option. And uh, what I've come come down to, that's all hubless motors and that kind of thing. But the, what I came down to, my speed controllers were in a, insufficient to drive the four motors that's on it. So I just got this in the mail today, which is a lovely 100 uh, or 70 amp per side uh, H bridge, four brushless, um, with a wireless controller. It's basically the off-road uh, skateboard equivalent speed controller, um, the next gen. So it's a frisky, and uh, so I'm very excited about integrating that in this week and getting that project rolling, literally. That sounds so nice. cool. That's yeah. awesome. Nice. I can't wait to see uh, what that turns out to be. Yeah. So the, 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 the final, the final version of this will be a um, extremely lightweight exoskeleton based driver uh, with a three three position uh, uh, solution, so a standing unpowered, uh, leaning like you're on a bar stool, um, powered at, at under five miles an hour, and then uh, a sit sit position that gets you full scooter speed. That is awesome! Um, uh, I can't so wait. It, it's it's really to me. It's it, uh, this is the market's missing this particular niche. Um, and spending a lot of time in a chair this last year, uh, because of my knees and my back, um, I, I'm, I'm now have a greater appreciation what the limitations of all those chair solutions are. Um, and mostly the, the biggest problem I've seen is, um, the lack of ability to have eye contact with people when you're talking to them or when you're in crowds or even just shopping, you're not at a height when you're shopping to get to the top shelf. You're not able, if you're sitting in a chair, 
to get into a door that's in a freezer section or a refrigerated section of a store uh, without getting out of the chair again. It's being in the damn chair. Um, so this is this is sort of an outgrowth of that sort of frustration that there isn't something that fits that criteria that doesn't cost forty thousand dollars. So I'm targeting under forty pounds and collapsible, so it goes inside of a trunk. Hell yeah! Sounds like a great idea. Yeah, well, we'll see if we, we can still see if we can pull it off. But uh, it, I, this was sort of the missing link of everything. Um, having something that had some guts to it to drive four motors. Um, really didn't have that up till now because the skateboard motor drivers were limited to 12 amps and the individual controllers were too uh, problematic to keep mixing and remixing for each position. What mechanism um, do you plan on employing to kind of like configure it from standing height to sitting? So that would be mechanical or like uh, automated. It's, it's, it's mostly mechanical, and there's there's uh, a trigger switches to the to each angle of of the, the 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 setting. So basically, if you're in the in the position of the from the standing position to the transition to powered, where the wheels naturally are touching the ground. It cambers back a, a pallet mover roller on each foot, um, and that allows that allows a, a four point stance on that front wheel, um, and that basically creates a triangle um, underneath the the center uh, of your mass, um, and it allows you to to navigate without. But but it, the current limiting was the problem was was coming up with something that would limit the current at that point in that position. So I've got switches designed in in the angle effectors for the for the knee and the ankle to show what angle it is at and what allows what it allows you to do at that angle. And, and um, I, that's a, what was that? I was going to ask uh, my last question. Uh, sorry to speak so much. Um, mechanic. No. Like in, in terms of you making this um, re reproducible and also lightweight, I can only assume that you're likely going to use aluminum or using uh, 80 20 or using like tubed aluminum. Like, uh, how do you plan on uh, structurally building uh, the prototypes are all 61 T6 aluminum? Uh, the, eventually, uh, it'll go to chromoly uh, tubing. Um, so it'll be relatively light and easy to work with. Uh, the the first pro first prototypes for the leg pieces between the knee and the ankle and the, and the knee and the hip were static but i realized after working with it for a while i need a i need about a uh, a 30 degree range of motion off of zero on the foot to be able to move your foot side to side to give you a better uh control over the uh directionality of the wheels uh, without but still limiting them so it can't actually cause a problem and and, and twist the foot away. So those yeah. will actually have to have a bearing and be able to twist in the middle. Yeah, my, my father-in-law has, uh, he's in your same situation. He's not completely to the point where he can't be mobile, mm -hmm. but he, it's not like he can just actively be out and about. So right. this project is perfect for him and I'm even willing to, invest in your project uh, so i'm gonna definitely so, contact you about that what i got yesterday in a, in a happy happenstance was a donation of uh 12 uh knee and ankle brace uh, brackets with graduated uh metal um uh, uh restraint struts uh that were removable from the sleeves so i can actually use them now and they lock and give you a range of motion between uh, two extremes. Um, right now, they're a mechanical lock, and I have to adapt that to a servo. Actually, let me go run and grab one while I'm while I'm talking about it. Because it's right in the next room. It should have just. Okay. Bye. <laughs> okay. Well... Bye. Sorry, get me talking about crap. <laughs> so this is the, the game. This is the ankle, hip, and and 
of uh, knee joint. So mm. it's, not, it's very lightweight. It's right out of those little knee braces. It's already pre-drilled. Um, it has a graduation from zero to 120 degrees and a little locking mechanism that you can do both ranges. So if you can see the little tabs, you can do one range to the other range, like a uh, irrigation head where you can limit where the, the head is going back and forth, but it limits how far the play is in the, that joint. So the ankles basically have about a 20 to 25 degree uh, play up and down, and the knee has almost free play because um, it, 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 it'll lock out straight so you can't hyperextend, and it goes all the way back to a seated position. The hip is like that. It's, it's, it's right in the middle of those two. So that was that was a happy thing because now I have all the materials uh, to make uh, five or six of them once I have the prototype done and I'm happy with and be able to test them on several different body types and weights and terrains and that kind of thing and give them out to people to, to give me feedback. I would need, <laughs> might need one for my knee shortly. Uh, you know, uh, after after five knee surgeries <clears throat> and no cartilage left, um, you know, I, I went and went and helped out on Friday. By Saturday afternoon, I couldn't walk. I was doing good until Monday night. I was lifting one of the wall panels for the arena, and I hit that one spot where it just was like, <clears throat> it's like, all right, I'm gonna go sit in the forklift, <laughs> not do any lifting anymore so so my my dumb project to get all the electronics and drive systems done is get the wheelchair for my mom um so she can drive around the house and be able to take it outside and be robust enough to get up and down the hills here such as they are and then the the second part is to start on this particular part of the project which is the articulated skeleton well awesome you that yeah that's awesome. Um, I'm going to skip around a little bit just because we're running a little long. And I want these guys to be able to introduce themselves with our better attention. Uh, we've got one new member who filled out the application, Alexander Edwards. He's already popped in a few times. So, Alex, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah. Um... Tell us. Tell us, you know, how you found FamLab, what you do, what you want to do. Yeah, I found, like uh, I actually found FamLab a long, long, long time ago. Uh, I just serendipitously met uh, Dustin Cox, if you guys uh, remember him. He, he's one of your members, too. So I was just speaking with him at my previous job. Just He was just a customer. He's like, dude, you need to go to FamLab. So like, I listened to him, and I went in person, like, years ago, but due to, like, working like 70 hours a week two jobs i was never really able to to really like come in like more so than just like the initial meetings that i was there so um after years i, I like still had his number i just called him up randomly i was like man i need to go back i was like um do you still go and everything so i just reconnected with him and uh he's kind of been showing me about cybersecurity and everything just did a six hour course on uh, cybersecurity. Uh, in general, I'm just, uh, I've always been into tinkering and building things. Um, as a kid, I was blessed to live in Japan for four years. And over there, um, they just throw out electronics. So I would just literally take them apart, even as a kid in the 90s, and start making little things out of the electronics that I would find or that, or that were recycled. So I've just been a lifelong um person that loves like tinkering building science like I studied biology even to the point of almost being a doctor I just couldn't actually do it because you know the whole pharmaceutical thing <laughs> they're not trying to actually heal people so uh currently I'm kind of like into everything you know like uh to the point like for instance like I'll grow my own blue green algae to consume you know because blue green algae it's not actually healthy. Well, it's exponentially healthier once you grow it, you know, and it turns uh, blue violet. Uh, I build a lot of electronics and computers and stuff now, but I really don't have any limitations. 
in terms of like what I'm interested in, but I like to, I want to come to the lab because there's certain things that, um, I started on, you know, like in my vacuum, you know, like I've never really had like a community or peers in the regard of like STEM related, uh, topics, you know, like normal people are generally not into this kind of stuff. So, uh, because my dad was a Marine, we moved around. So I've never really had like roots in a, in a place for very long. So I lived in Japan for four years. I lived in California for eight years, North Carolina, South Carolina, and I've been to a bunch of different countries in between. So uh, really, I just want to come to FamilyLab, start uh, really like investing in the things that I actually care about in life. So I would say it, it, this isn't just like a hobby for me. Like this is me like truly giving that part of myself that's been neglected for 30, 40 years what it actually needs, you know? So like, this is like a rebirth for me, to be honest. So I'm, I'm very excited to be here and to really connect with people that <clears throat> are into this kind of stuff. But that's not gonna look at me crazy if I tell them that I, I have a CNC machine in my, in my kitchen. <laughs> like, I don't wanna, I don't know. I just wanna like connect with people and, and I don't know, see where it takes me. I, I really, I mean, I'm here for the journey. There's no destination, so. I don't know where this will take me, but I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Keep the dust out of your eggs. <laughs> it's bad dust. Gives new meaning to fish and chips. So I have, I have a, a go ahead. I have a 3D printer in my kitchen. That's but that's just because my apartment is small and my kitchen is basically my living room. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I want to get a 3D printer. I'm just kind of like scrupulous about what I want to buy. I don't know if I wanted to buy like something that would print in resin or just like a standard like layer by layer printer. But I did buy the parts. I ha already have a Pine phone, which is basically like a Raspberry Pi in the shape of a phone. Uh, of a phone. But Octoprint has already been uh, ported to it. So I bought the parts for a Pine phone, even though I already have one, just so I can build it myself from scratch. And I plan on using that one for Octoprint. So um, I really want a, a nice 3D printer, something that has a very large bay that's auto leveling. But uh, that's what I plan on doing. Like I want, like I don't even, my whole living room and kitchen area is not a standard living room. It's like my own little lab, like Dexter's laboratory. Well, that's awesome. Does anyone have any questions for Alex? So what? Well, uh, have you seen our space yet? Have you gotten a chance to wander around a bit? Yeah, like like I said in the beginning, um, I've been there. It was literally like three or four years ago. So I've, I've physically been there probably twice. And this was like way before COVID or anything. Like this was like maybe two years before COVID was even a thing. So it's really been like four years. But I've physically been there twice in the distant past. Um, so that so you answer your question. Decent idea of what we have available. So, once you get access to it, what is the first project you're going to finish? Um, I already have a really good CNC machine. Like, I really don't have any limitations there. But I'll probably do something simple. Um, once I get trained on the laser engraver, I'll just do something simple, like put a uh, laser engrave one of my ink pads or something like I have a lot of ink pads that I like rebuilding. I'm actually converting one of them like an old school one into like a modern motherboard that someone designed in China. But I'll probably just do something simple like that. Just use a laser engraver. Anyone else have any questions? <clears throat> Star Wars or Star Trek? Or something yeah, else, of course. There's only one answer. Star Trek. Is Picard or Kirk going to win in a fight? Who? Picard or Kirk going to win in a fight? Mm, I would say... Now or when they were on the show? <laughs> <laughs> I think Picard would uh, win. I, I'd love that pay-per-view, though. <laughs> I, yeah, uh, I don't I know. I'll, I'll... watch Patrick Stewart kick Bill Shatner's ass. Yeah. You just have to give him a small push and he'd fall over. But 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 Shatner's an astronaut now. Yeah, I love oh, Star Wars and everything, but um, it's not as good as Star Trek. Start that shit, Dave. <laughs> I, 
feel like we're getting off track. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> There's a track? <laughs> Any other questions for Mr. Alex? Besides the laser, what are some things you'd like to learn from us? Um, I, I want to learn everything. I want to learn Python. I want to learn about ham radio. I want to like explore LoRa, which is a new open wireless communication protocol. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I'm open to any and everything. Like, I'm a sponge. Like, I've never really lost that childlike curiosity. And I guess that's why I'm able to learn, you know, but um, I'm, I'm willing and I'm open to any and everything, you know, because uh, I don't know, like, I, I would like to learn more about CNC, you know, like on, you know, like the larger CNC machines, like um, manufacturing like steel and, 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 and like metals and whatnot. But um, I want to learn about coding and 3D printing more so. Everything that I've ever learned has been self-taught, by the way. So I've never really had, <clears throat> I don't know, like I've never really had peers. So I've, uh, I've kind of developed in a vacuum, which is a good thing and a bad thing, you know. But it's nice to have uh, some context, you know. Someone's like, hey, why are you doing it that way? Or or like that way is a more difficult way of doing things, you know. So I, I don't know. I, I want to learn anything that someone's willing to share with me. What could we learn from you? Hmm. From Learned me, what could you learn from me? I could teach you how to ride a one wheel. I could definitely do that. <laughs> <laughs> could uh, you though? Well, I am very off balance. <laughs> it, it, that's what the gyroscope's for. It's to do the job for you. You don't have to balance. So I can get you up and running on a one wheel. Uh, but yeah, I would say for me, it's not really science related, but I'm I'm pretty good at cooking, you know. <laughs> I can teach you how to you how to cook if you don't know how to do that. <laughs> There's a lot of science in cooking and baking. Yeah, I know. All that I'll teach chemistry. you about the Maior effect. <laughs> There's science in cooking. There's magic in baking. That's black magic right there. Do you have a good recipe for boiled water? <laughs> Depending on your I've altitude. I've seen those. That might help. <laughs> well, awesome. Thank you, Alex. If there are no other questions, uh, do we have anyone else to introduce? I'm not a member, but I'm just a person that showed up and I found about Family Alarm just this morning. Um, oh. Wow. Yeah, so completely opposite of Alex. I have no knowledge of this for the past four years. Um, but I guess I could just talk about myself because I was interested in seeing the lab since I just moved um, 13 minutes away from um, the place. So I thought I'd check it out since it seemed close by. Uh, let's see. So in my story, I just graduated college about uh, eight months ago, I believe. So, or was it May? So I guess it's like, I'm bad with my math right now. I think maybe six months ago. Yeah, so that happened and recently got a job as a software developer, um, remote software developer. So I basically spend most of my time behind a computer um, developing web applications and stuff like that. I've been interested in this space recently because uh, I'm not sure if this would make sense, but if you have all of you seen anything about like the meta Facebook um, presentation. Have you seen that before? Uh, regardless, the thing about seeing that, I kind of felt a bit, um, a little bit sad, I guess. I, I wasn't really, I think the best way to describe it is I felt that it was going to become a hyper reality and it was not going, it was going to disassociate people from the world. And I didn't really like the way that was going, especially because I thought in some way, my profession is kind of like leading into that. Um, so I wanted to find an area of technology since I've always been interested, whether it's repairing um, my computers for my family or, you know, helping with security um, for my aunts and my uncles. I thought maybe I could find something a little bit more grounded in reality. And I thought the makerspace and constructing real solutions with hardware 
might be something that would be interested. So I thought I'd take a look. Uh, I guess hearing from what Alex said, if there's something you wanted to learn from me, I could probably teach you about web development and the basis of it. I'm still learning though, but you know, I'm happy to share. And also I'm interested in cybersecurity and 3D printing and seeing what kind of stuff that can be done with that tech. So yeah. Oh, and if you want to know how to pronounce my name, it's a weird, it's a bit of a weird one because I think it's the only one in the world. I'm not too sure. I checked um, Koreans, I couldn't find anything close. Um, but it's E. John Winter. Uh, I'm Panamanian, Jamaican, and family came to Florida. When and now I'm here in Orlando. Hey, it's a small world. My grandfather's from Panama, and my mother's from Jamaica. It's wow. a small world, man. <laughs> That's a, wow, man, look at that. It was good to meet you. And it's good to meet all of you. Nice to meet you too, man. I would say, um, even though I've only been there like twice, like four years ago, I would say this is, you're going to love it, man. Like when it's all up and running, like, uh, like at all full cylinders, it's like all these people super welcoming and there's projects going on. There's lit, there's laser engravers going on. There's CNC machines going on. There's like a biology lab. Uh, I would say you're going to love it, man. You definitely need to see it for yourself. Yeah, I have to. It's, I mean, I was just checking the website and it looked um, pretty impressive. So, and there wasn't anything like that in my hometown. So I thought I have to see it for myself. And I'm glad I got to come in at a time where everyone's like talking about like the Maker Fair. I didn't even know about it, but it seems you guys are really invested into uh, FamLab and also the presentation you have to the community and I'm really excited about that. Awesome. Does any, uh, it was, uh, Yi Zhang, Yi Zhang? Yi Zhang, like, uh, Yi Zhang? Yeah, like email, okay. Yi Zhang. Does anyone have any questions for Yi Zhang? Sorry if I mispronounced it. How many spaces are in a tab? If I remember correctly, I think it's four. Maybe wrong. That's acceptable. Tabs don't exist. Only spaces. It's at least one. <laughs> uh, yeah, at least one for sure. So what's your what's your favorite language and why is it not JavaScript or MATLAB? That's not JavaScript or MATLAB. Um, <laughs> is easily I would say Python is most elegant and easiest for, to write. It's smooth simple um but it requires you to write in the way that it wants you and that's not, not really bad I, I think anything it forces you to be good at your coding uh, but i like that and ironically enough i enjoy i have like a love hate relationship with php um on one hand it's so weird i don't understand it but at the same time um it gets better and it makes more sense and it's really flexible. I, I, I think that's the thing I never understood. Like I thought JavaScript was flexible, but PHP has been at it for a long time. How's your CSS? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, I actually love CSS, despite what you might think. I like CSS um, and presentation. I was actually first getting to front end development. And, and because of that, I am, this might everyone with, it says about like CSS hell. Uh, I think it's not that bad. I mean, maybe that just makes me a, um, a sinner, but whatever. Yeah, how did CSS hell work trying to make NetSuite not be like bright? Uh, yeah, I, I think the only thing that I don't like about CSS is the, it's really the only thing I, and that's just because of browsers, um, just different browsers, how they interpret it. That's the only thing I have an issue with it. If it was everything like Spider Monkey or everything on, you know, Chromium, then I would be fine. But I have to kind of balance out. So maybe that's good and bad because diversity brings out new ideas. Don't worry, our overlords will all be Google one of these days. Hopefully. Ow. As a not coder at all, this is all fascinating, and I have no idea what anyone's talking about. Yeah, I'm not a coder either, but uh, I have an inclination as to what they're talking about. <laughs> I know Python. Python, I know what that is. 
You just pound on the keyboard until something happens that you want. No, Copy that's pasta, no, that's search Google's, it. borrow from Stack Exchange. <laughs> no, it does what you told it to, which is probably not what you wanted. You see, that's what Brian uh, has. Unless right. you bought yourself the specialized copy and paste from Stack Overflow keyboard. You gotta get, get you but, one of those and then use a real coder. I kind of see, like, you got to think about it like this. You know, in the end, I kind of have to think about, like, I'm talking to a toddler who is really good at, obe at being obedient. But if you're not able to bring it down to its word and its comprehension, then it's going to get upset and cry when things aren't working and then you're yelling at it. And you, at the end of the day, everyone's upset. We're, we're still talking about coding and not like lab members, right? <laughs> that sounds like machining. It sounds like operating okay. <laughs> a machine. Yeah. I was going to say CNC programming, what? G code is still code. Three yeah, it's a toddler right? with a jackhammer. <laughs> But yeah, um, awesome. I, I, are there any other? If there's one thing. Any like, other questions? If there's one thing I like to say before you ask another question, if you want, more or less, all the programming I learned wasn't really through school. It was through a site called Free Code Camp, and that pretty much, like five years ago, kickstarted my career to where I, you know, am now. So, what is something you'd like to learn from us? I feel like I really need to learn more about, I would say, what I can do with hardware. I, I feel like I neglected that because when I got into my CS degree, I did not understand circuits. I did not understand the logic gates as well. Um, and I kind of so like left the guy in Arduino. Huh? Someone give the, the guy an Arduino. Yeah, I feel like I need to like understand the Arduino or someone to help me out with it because I don't know. Skip, gonna... skip the Arduino, go with an ESP, you'll be much happier. Oh, yeah, yeah. we've got a few at lab. Hey, I got, I got time. I mean, you know, pretty much I just have my most of my afternoons and my evenings. So um, if it's something I need to grind through, then I'm willing to grind through it so I can learn it because I would feel happier knowing that uh, I gained something and able to do something different than before. Awesome. Any further questions? Yeah, I was going to ask you, um, John, about your what you were thinking about the whole metaverse thing, because I, I honestly feel the same way as you. Like, it's kind of like this, this, like, if you know about technology, you can see that the dystopia is coming. And it's like, I can only imagine how you feel as a person that you would be actively, like, not like on purpose, but just working in your field, uh, creating that dystopia in the future. So, um, I would say proprietary software is the reason why that's going to be the case. You know, like if there was freedom, but I don't know, like major networks like that, like Facebook is running cable from like continent to continent, like the open source community is not going to be able to match that, but well, what do you think is a good way to like counteract uh, that dystopia from coming? You know, um, I I don't believe in like material things and to material consequences. And Facebook and other thing companies, or I guess men, because I'm not a man, um, all have the capital to do whatever they want. And I think all of those dreams come from a desire to emulate those uh, movies and fiction from the 1980s the rise of cyberpunk. And because they have the capital to enact what they would want, they believe that their ideas uh, will scale and will be accepted, even though it seems like VR and these technologies, although I like it, it seems cool, it's not something that mass adoption has been, like, years ago, people are not like, yeah, I've been going into VR, people are like, yeah, it's a nice toy. So I feel like it's something that they're pushing into the market. But the other thing I believe is that Consumers have, you know, each other and their own collective labor and knowledge to build their own metaverse. But I don't think that's really the case of people want. I think if anything after this pandemic, people want to find ways that can help each other and connect each other on a material and physical level. There's a reason why we saw people physically creating like masks and PDE during the pandemic. And it's worth these things. I believe that there's a conflict between these two interests. The tech boards and no one else would want to create like a way for people to upload a consciousness uh, or try to create like a virtual land where they have full control away from other things like taxes, government, etc. And I think for people, they could be just focused more on, you know, maybe not maybe sustainable decisions. 
decentralized solutions towards the problems they have. I mean, I think that's the reason why people are getting into blockchain because they find that it's an alternative to centralized systems or other kind of way of things. But um, I guess to simplify it, people should focus more on how addressing human needs and their own in a very localized and decentralized way. Excellent answer. Yeah. So I had to pick your brain on that as a person. It's much more knowledgeable than I. <laughs> uh, well, I appreciate that, but uh, I, I wouldn't say no too much. It's just speculation on um, my own. Yeah, that's exactly what I was getting at. Yeah, that's exactly what I was getting at. Because it is speculation because it's an idea that hasn't been implemented yet. Awesome. Thank you for introducing and 